tonight on Dateline. How long has he been here? Almost a year. The world's leading scientists warn one million species could be annihilated in a matter of decades. We go to Sulawesi to see the illegal trade fueling extinction. Di pasar ini jual macam-macam, uh, macam paniki, babi utang, ular. Can it be stopped before it's too late? We're sleepwalking into ecological disaster. Sulawesi's forests are dubbed the Galapagos of Asia, home to a melting pot of life. Many of the creatures that live on this Indonesian island are found nowhere else in the world. This looks like a children's game, but 10-year-old Revan and his friend Wahyu are the innocent face of a murky and often illegal wildlife trade. At the entrance to Bantimurung National Park, thousands of butterflies are sold en masse by traders like Revan's mum. Ini, ada hiasan dinding kupu-kupu, ada pin, ada dan keyring kunci. Yeah. <laughs> Every butterfly here is essential to the forest's food chain and its survival. But Suriani sells them for just a few dollars. Kupu-kupunya itu tambah langka, tambah mahal karena langka begitu. And so which butterfly in here is the rarest butterfly then? Yang terajanya. This one? Up here? Really? Called a Ripon's birdwing, this butterfly is a protected species. Harganya semakin mahal karena spesiesnya bagus, susah juga dapatnya. Gitu. Tidak ada di tempat lain juga. Gitu. Di sini pusatnya. Overseas, this butterfly can fetch close to $60 on the black market. The fact it could soon become extinct isn't a concern. Suriani has a family to support. Why are the forests of Sulawesi so special, do you think? Special di sini tuh hutannya banyak menghasilkan sumber daya termasuk kupu-kupu ini bisa dijadikan sumber pendapatan begitu. Ini juga kalau tidak dimanfaatkan akan rusak sendiri. Far from the butterfly traders of Banti Marung lies the front line of this thriving illegal wildlife trade. In the north of Sulawesi, the town of Manado is a gateway to the rest of Asia. Manado itu adalah merupakan tempat itu sangat penting karena karena dia merupakan tempat transit untuk seludupan hewan-hewan yang dilindungi. Karena di sini ada pelabuhan dan dua pelabuhan yang ada di Manado yaitu pelabuhan Manado dan pelabuhan Bitung. Donny Enka leads investigations as part of a specialized Indonesian government task force called GAKUM. It's his job to protect the forests and their animals. Sulawesi di Indonesia bagian timur mungkin menjadi salah satu tempat transit yang lumayan besar. At ports like these, Donny seizes animals from across the region as they're smuggled in and out of the country. Recently, he caught this trader smuggling 14 rare or endangered birds. 
How many ports are there in North Sulawesi where animal trade is coming in and going out? Banyak, banyak sekali pelabuhan yang ada di Sulawesi. Karena Sulawesi itu dikelilingi garis pantainya lumayan panjang. Jadi tidak terhitung berapa banyak pelabuhan tradisional yang ada. Donny has just 26 officers for this entire region and faces an enormous task. One animal is prized above all else, a rare variety of macaque or monkey that has human-like features called a yaki. Out here, they live side by side with locals. So we've just got a tip off that there is a yaki being kept illegally in somebody's backyard. And the yaki is critically endangered. We're not exactly sure why they're keeping it, but we've been told it's in pretty bad condition. This is the place. Is it in there? Yeah. That's the yaki. The yaki is one of more than 900 species protected by Indonesian law, but many locals have no idea. Do you ever let him off the leash? Pernah dilepas dari rantainya, Bu. Really? How long has he been here? Sudah berapa lama di situ? Almost two years. Do you think this is the right place for him? Keeping a yaki like this could mean five years in jail or a hundred million rupee fine. That's more than 20 times the average monthly income here. Untuk kasus yang ini, ibu atau masyarakat yang di sini mereka secara tidak sengaja memelihara yaki yang ada di sini karena itu diberikan oleh saudaranya. Memang seperti itu masyarakat di sini mereka tidak mengerti tentang aturan seperti itu sehingga tanpa mereka sengaja mereka memelihara satwa yang dilindungi yang sebenarnya itu dilarang oleh pemerintah Indonesia. As it's her first defense today. This owner escapes with a warning. When an animal is seized, it's brought here to the Tasikoki Wildlife Refuge. It's the only refuge of its kind in the region, and it's almost at capacity. How many um, macaques do you have here at Tasikoki? There is 170 wow. macaques from five different species in Sulawesi. And the most is uh, Macaca nigra, critically endangered one, and the make to Minahasa. Yeah. What condition do you think this little guy is in at this point? Uh, it's in a poor nutrition conditions. All right, be careful. We're gonna get to quite close over there, so they might grab your hair, so be careful with it. <laughs> okay. The refuge is enormous. Oh, okay. <laughs> Every kind of animal is here, from orangutans to sun bears. What's in here? It's crocodiles. Crocodiles? Yeah. And were they traded um, as well? Yes. All of them have been taken from traffickers or people who kept them illegally as pets. So yeah, we're in the bird center now. Black cap lorry, chattering lorry, yellow crested cockatoos, silver crested cockatoos. Yeah, many different species of parrots and cockatoos from Moluccan and Papua area, which is um, smuggled from the wild to be sold as a pet. But there's a surprisingly bigger threat than the pet trade. Many of these animals are also hunted to be eaten. Mostly, they've been catch from the wild for the bushmeat. So the hunters take it back home, um, kill it as a food. When they have the babies, that's what they take as well as a pet. Mm. So what trade is having the worst impact and why? It's the bushmeat because it's 
dead already. You cannot, you cannot send them back to the wild. Wow. That is an incredible view. From a lookout point, Billy tells me the scale of the bushmeat trade will have impacts that reach far beyond this refuge. So how bad is this then? This is bad because it's not sustainable. All of these species are get catch from the wild, yeah, directly from the wild. And if it's that keep going on, 80-90% of the wildlife in Sulawesi are facing extinctions. Yeah? We're sleepwalking into um, ecological disaster. To find out more about the bushmeat trade, I'm heading inland to visit what locals call an extreme market. Here in Tomahon, the taste for bushmeat runs deep. Steeped in local tradition, just about every kind of animal is for sale. Di pasar ini jual macam-macam. Uh, macam paniki, babi utang, ular, ada tikus hutan, ikan babi, RW. Apa lagi ya? Kira-kira itu dulu ya. Sekarang yang dapat lihat. It's a lot of meat to sell. David and his family have been selling bushmeat here for eight years, mostly to indigenous locals called Minahasans. Why do people love bushmeat so much? Uh, so, jadi kebiasaan dari orang bah, makan ini atau ini so kebiasaan orang Minahasa begitu. But this trade is barely regulated. Every animal here has been caught from the wild and is sold in huge quantities. Is the rarer the animal, the better it is? Ya, begitu. Kalau makin mahal, semakin kurang. Mahalnya daging, makin kurangnya pasokan. Gitu. Biasanya daging paniki harganya cuma 5 sampai 60 ribu. Tapi kalau datang musim langka, pasokan kurang bisa mencapai 150 ribu per kilo. Itu yang paling mah. While David makes most of his money selling bats, snakes and boar, monkey meat like the yaki is also considered a local delicacy. What about yaki? Can you sell yaki? Itu pun dua orang, dua penjual. Penjual cuma di atas lak, satu, satu, satu ekor, setinggi dua ekor itu. Rasa sayang. Jampotong tu yaki. Mirip orang soalnya. Right now, there are meant to be legal limits to the amount of wild animals traders can sell, but they're mostly ignored. A recent study found that bats are totally wiped out in some communities of North Sulawesi and at risk of vanishing in others nearby. Do you know where these bats are coming from? Jauh. Perjalanannya saja sampai tiga empat hari tiga. So why can't you source these bats locally? Sudah kurang. Karena orang sini tidak bisa lihat kalau warga gede gini besar begini terbang diusahakan ditangkap bikin ikan. David's caught up in a dilemma. If he doesn't sell bats, he can't support his family. But if he continues, a time may come when his grandchildren won't even know what a bat looks like. Nyata sekarang, ya saya merasa di bagian kepunahan karena menurut kita ada orang yang bajual. Kalau misalnya dia habis atau dia punah, mungkin ya tinggal ditunjuk saya semacam dinosaurus sekarang tinggal gambar ini gambar paniki. Yang paniki model begini, tinggal kenangan mungkin. Thank you. For now, 
eating bat is tradition, and the bushmeat trade shows no sign of slowing down. But unlike David, not everyone is abiding by the law. In Sulawesi, protected species like yaki, a type of monkey, aren't sold openly at the local market. But I'm told there is a lucrative trade on the black market. Right now it is 3.30 a.m. in the morning here and we are outside Tomahon's biggest slaughterhouse. Uh, this is where all the produce from across the country comes before entering the bushmeat market. And I'm waiting for a group of activists who are going to help me get inside. Hello. Hi. Don't know. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Aldo. What's your name? Aldo. Aldo, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, and Nikki. Nikki. Yeah. And Nikki. So Delano, what are you looking for when you go inside? Uh, kita akan melihat uh, kalau ada hewan yang dilindungi uh, yang marak diperjualbelikan di sini. Hmm. All right, well let's go and have okay, a look. Let's go. Delano says protected species are also being sold as traditional medicine, and authorities aren't doing enough to police the supply chain. Ada lembaga-lembaga penegak hukum pemerintah yang harus melakukan ini, tetapi mungkin karena sesuatu dan lain hal mereka tidak bisa. Jadi kebanyakan ada di organisasi seperti kita atau organisasi partner kita yang melakukan pekerjaan ini. What's this? A bat. That's bat. Yeah. Today, he's taking matters into his own hands looking for any illegal species to report to police. And the dogs. Yeah. And this is a uh, snakes, reticulatus python. But yeah, yeah it's bats, bats too, yeah, with the eyes on it. How many bats do you think are in there right now? I think more than 100. More than 100 Yeah, bats. in one box. Oh my God. Trucked in from across the country, there are hundreds of animal parts here. Wow, right. And is there more meat underneath that ice? There's more meat under there. But there's no sign of anything protected. Do you have any yaki here? No, no. No yaki? No. When was the last time the government checked this place? About three to four months ago. The owner admits the only authorities checking what he sells are from the health department. So they're not necessarily checking the species that yeah, are Yeah, just how they... Uh, uh, the animals, Just the packaging? Yeah. So do the forestry or environment police ever visit here? Oh, no. no. Wow. And so these are photos that you've taken? Yeah, ini yang di tengah adalah yaki atau makakan nigra. Is that... Is that at Tomohon Market? Tomohon, Pasar Tomohon. Really? Yeah. Pasar Ekstrim Tomohon, yeah. Back at Delano's headquarters, he shows me proof protected species like yaki are being illegally traded by other vendors. And was this being sold openly in the market or was it something that was done under the table? Kebanyakan uh, dijual secara sembunyi-sembunyi, jadi pedagang menaruh uh, jenis uh, hewan ini di bawah meja, disembunyikan di bawah meja, dan hanya dijual kepada uh, penduduk lokal. And so what's the biggest problem then with the bushmeat trade, do you think? Seperti yang kita tahu di Indonesia, sudah begitu banyaknya peraturan perundang-undangan untuk melindungi jenis-jenis hewan ini, tetapi Tanpa penegakan hukum yang baik, maka semuanya adalah percuma. Investigations by several NGOs 
found one of the biggest contributors to Indonesia's illegal animal trade was a lack of effective law enforcement. To show me what this looks like, Delano takes me to a forestry police checkpoint. So what, what's this, Delano? Ini pos pengawasan hasil hutan. Jadi tanaman tumbuhan uh, atau hewan yang dari hutan seharusnya diperiksa di sini oleh polisi kehutanan atau uh, ranger. It's 10 a.m. on a Friday, one of the busiest days of the week for deliveries to Tomahon's bushmeat market. And so, where is everybody? Ah, uh, it's empty. Uh, tidak ada orang. Back in Manado, I'm meeting up again with forestry officer Donny Enka to see if he thinks his unit is doing enough to stop the wildlife trade. Something that comes up when I talk to everybody on this issue is the lack of effective law enforcement. Why do you think law enforcement has such a bad reputation? Ya gimana ya mau dijawabnya? Masyarakat itu pingin kami itu kayak Superman gitu. Dia mau masyarakat itu maunya semua setiap kejadian apapun yang bertentangan dengan aturan itu langsung kami tangani. Sedangkan itu susah terjangkau oleh kami. Donny insists the forestry police are making an impact, but he can't explain the checkpoint. When I was in Tomahon and we visited checkpoints and there was no police there, why is that? Beda juga sih. Pos itu bukan pos bukan pos kami sih. Tapi nah enak juga saya mau menjelaskan kira -kira. Have I made you nervous, Tony? Iya. <laughs> Membuat saya gugup nervous. Nanti pertanyaan-pertanyaannya you too smart. To ask me. The UN claims the wildlife trade is now the fourth biggest illegal industry in the world, after drugs, arms and human trafficking. Sulawesi's officers hope to put more traffickers behind bars, but that alone won't stop the decline of wildlife. Local attitudes need to change. What is the Green Gospel's mission? Um, well, it's basically to spread conservation messages through biblical approaches. Christianity is quite a big part of what Sulawesi is, of who Sulawesi is, and we figure that if maybe the law won't work on them, then we're hoping that maybe the Bible will. Prissy isn't part of the church. She's a conservationist. But she knows Sunday schools are a powerful tool for change. Nah, jadi semua kegiatan di dalam silabus ini berhubungan dengan um, ayat-ayat Alkitab, tapi yang berhubungan dengan pelestarian alam. Through a simple crossword, this activity is teaching children the difference between pets and wild animals. Nah, apa yang tidak dibutuhkan oleh Yaki? It's not just kids learning something new. What do you think of this? Bagus untuk anak-anak untuk belajar, untuk minatan-minatan supaya mereka tahu. Why? Karena anak-anak generasi penerus, pengganti-pengganti generasi penerus untuk mengetahui minatan-minatan yang ada. This event is a starting point, but I wonder if it's enough to really turn the tide. What is at stake on a big oh, picture man. here if this doesn't work? To give it to you straight, then continuation of population decline of many endangered endemic species of North Sulawesi. These people, the community, they are in the center of it all, and so. 
if we don't protect it, then there they go, you know, the, then we lose a lot of precious things. And I don't want that for my hometown. With each generation, environmental degradation increases. In just 50 years, the world's animal populations have dropped by an average of 60%. Will this just become a generation's new normal? Or will they wake up before it's all lost? Hitam. What happens if the butterflies disappear one day? Would a butterfly be happier in a shop or a forest? Thank you.